Mabel. Starring Larry Blyden and Nita Talbot. There she is. My girl, Mabel. Oh, I'm crazy about her. Nice, huh? You know, in the old days, when a guy loved a dame, he went out and proved it by killing a dragon. I wish I lived in them days, because I know exactly how to slay a dragon. See, I wait until the dragon is crossing the street against the light, then I throw the cab into gear, and wham! I got me a dead dragon on the bumper. <laughs> well, those were the days of heroes. Not that a guy can't be a hero today, too. Like, you take what happened just the other day. Well, just sit back and relax. I'm going to tell you about this in a minute. Thanks, lady. I was supposed to call my girl an hour ago. Beauty shop, Miss Spooner speaking. Hi, baby, it's me. <laughs> Who's me? <laughs> Joey. Joey, you were supposed to call me on my lunch hour, and it's after two. What happened? That woman, she was smoking in here. Joey, are you in the bar? <laughs> oh, no, baby, I just called to explain why I'm calling late. I know why, because you're irresponsible. I happen to be very responsible. Maybe one other time I failed you. I could name you millions of times. Take last night. I thought it was fun. <laughs> Don't change the subject. You were supposed to be at my house for dinner at 6.30 and you showed up at 9. I'll give you another example. You were supposed to marry me nearly three years ago and I'm still not married. All right, you want an explanation? I'll give you an explanation. I didn't show up at your house last night because I don't like chicken. You're not married because I am chicken. <laughs> You telling me? <laughs> Look, baby, let's not fight over the phone. Let's do it in person where we can have the pleasure of making up. Okay, Joey. I don't enjoy arguing with you anyway, even when I'm right. <laughs> see you at the house tonight. Okay, baby. I'll see you at the house tonight. Oh, I gotta go, baby. I got a fare. Bye. Yes, sir. Where to? Bus station. Make it fast. What's the matter? You got a call? I better roll up the window. Maybe you don't want to sit in the draft. Okay, well, that's the way it is. Let's go. Yeah, well, of course, fresh air is good for a call. It blows the germs away. All right, open it. <laughs> of course, there are two schools of thought, and I wouldn't want to be responsible for you getting double pneumonia. Hey, close <laughs> Okay, sir, where to? Bus station, make it fast. Okay, you want to go through the park? You want to go down fifth? Don't make any difference. Just let's get going. Well, the park is kind of nice this time of year, and it's faster. All right, take the park. Of course, Fifth Avenue is shorter and more direct, and it's less on the meter, but they're more stoplights. All right, take Fifth Avenue. Why don't you like the park? <laughs> Look, I don't care whether the window is open or closed. I don't care whether you take the park or Fifth Avenue. Just get me to the bus station. Well, then tell me how you want to go. You want to go through the park with a window up or down Fifth with a window down? <laughs> Would you stop being a pest and just get me to the bus station with your mouth closed? <laughs> you know, buddy, you got a face that's easy to remember. Well, just make it a point to forget it. It'll be a pleasure. Good night, folks. Where'd you like the crepe Suzette? My own recipe. Getting complaints that the ketchup was too strong. <laughs> yeah. Give me the usual sandwich plate. Grill one with 
Sign a French fry. What are you yelling for? You're all alone here. I know it. I know, this is doing a little class in case somebody's passing by. <laughs> look at this guy, then look at me. Why can't I marry a dame with a million bucks? <laughs> See what's happening with Superman. <laughs> Why get married the hard way and make a million bucks? Do it the easy way, make a million bucks by pulling a stick up like this guy did. How much could he get? $30,000. $30,000, let me see that. An unidentified bandit today held up the citywide charity fund and escaped for $30,000 in a small black police. The police have no clue to the identity of the uh, 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 Identity. <laughs> That's what I said. Identity of the thief who wore a handkerchief over his face. The robbery took place at 2 o'clock in the charity fund office at 87th and Lexington. How do you like that? 30,000 bucks. You don't have to declare it. It's tax-free. <laughs> 87th and Lexington. I was in that neighborhood today around 2 o'clock. I picked up a fair day. This guy had a handkerchief over his face. And every time I talked to him... Ah! <laughs> What's the matter? You know something about the holdup? You were there? You stole the money? You saw the crook? You saw him pull the stick up? No, wait a minute. He's 20th century. American. Living on a dead. Is he in the art? He's a composer. Uh, is it Beethoven? Shall we say something? I saw I saw him. I had him in a cab. He was a pastor. He had a little black police with him. I took him to the bus terminal. He could have killed me. No kidding. The crook was in your cab. Let me see this. Let me see this. Wore a handkerchief over his face and could not be identified. I can identify him. I can identify him. He dropped the handkerchief for a minute and I saw his face. I saw what he looked like. Sure, I saw him. I saw him. I remember him. Joey, where are you going? Sure. Who are you calling? Sure, sure. I remember him. Good. He had a little, a little uh, button in his lapel. You know that charity button that says I gave? Should have said I took. Joey, who are you calling? <laughs> what? Joey, who are you calling? Calling the police. I got to identify the guy. I saw his face. Joey, are you crazy? Are you crazy? What's the matter? Joey. M-Y-O-B. M-Y-O-B? Mayob. <laughs> Mayob? M-Y-O-B. Mind your own business. Stay out of trouble. Are you crazy? This guy stole money from charity. $30,000 from widows and orphans. If widows and orphans have 30,000 bucks laying around, they're better off than you are. <laughs> I, I saw his face. I got to identify him. And I'll have to identify you with the morgue. How do you know this guy's working alone? Maybe he's part of some big mob. Uh... <laughs> By the way, they get you the day after you put the finger on the crook. <laughs> They'll probably kill it. They knock you up in a second, and you'd be a dead cab driver. What cab driver? Who drives a cab? Who saw anything? Not me. That's you in your head, boy. Forget you ever saw the guy. Yeah, boy, I didn't see anything all day. All day, I drove my eyes closed. That's you in your head. You didn't see nothing. See, yeah. that way you're safe. Yeah, that way I'm safe. You're safe. Unless. Unless what? What do you mean, unless? Unless what? Who? What? Well, well unless he also got a good look at you, and he knows that you're the only guy who saw him. But he couldn't. He couldn't. I just turned around for one little brief instant to get a look at so I get to ask him where he was. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll show you how fast it was. I'll show you. See, he... Now, watch this. This is how fast I turned around. Where to? <laughs> you see that? You see that? Would you recognize me? You wouldn't recognize me if you was a, was a crook. Would you, Mike? Would you, Mike? Would you? <laughs> oh, like they wouldn't shoot a guy with high blood pressure. <laughs> you ain't got high blood pressure. I do when anybody points a gun at me. <laughs> well, I better get over to Mabel's before she gets high blood pressure. Wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. All right out there? Okay, out here. All right, Joey, this is the only chance. Go ahead, run. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You are, sis. No, that's the third jack he gave me. Well, my mind isn't on the game. It's on Joey. Keep your mind on the cards, Mabel. Pretty embarrassing to keep on losing to little Nick the Greek here. <laughs> Don't be a sore loser, Mom. 
I'm not a sore loser, but if you ask me, nobody can win as often as you do without cheating. <laughs> let's refuse to pay off. That's not a bad idea. All right, Welchers, let's add up the score. I'll see. Now, Mom, you lost 76 thousand dollars. Eighty thousand dollars. Well, it's only money. And Mabel, you lost fifty-nine thousand dollars. That's more than I made in just four weeks. <laughs> and if we're playing at the rate of ten thousand dollars for a penny, Mom, you owe me eight cents, and Mabel, you owe me six cents. Well, you're overdrawn on your allowance. We'll deduct it from that. And I gave you a quarter yesterday, and you didn't bring me change. Well, that teaches me a lesson. Never play cards with strings. <laughs> That's Joey. Half an hour late. Watch him come in like nothing is wrong. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Nobody's there. What are the lights doing on? <laughs> Why are the blinds closed? Where's the lookout? Who's that man down there on the street? What man? Where? That man there. That's Mr. Hanover, the newspaper man. That's his newsstand. Why shouldn't he be there? I don't know, Mr. Hanover, but that don't look like him to me. Would you mind telling me what's going on? Okay. Ow! Come here. Come here. Look at this. Right there. Uh, unidentified bandit. Joey, I didn't want to get married that bad. I didn't pull a stick up, but I saw the guy who did. I'm the only one that can identify him. Hey, Joe, maybe they'll take you for a ride. Well, cut that out, Sherman. <laughs> Listen, let me explain something to you. I didn't talk, see, I didn't tell the cops anything, nothing. You mean you're the only one who can identify the crook and you won't talk? Money taken from widows and orphans? Boy, if I was an orphan, I sure wouldn't want you for a father. <laughs> What's everybody making such a big thing about this for? I didn't identify the guy because that's a, a policeman's job. I'll tell you why everybody's making such a big thing, because this shows exactly how irresponsible you are. You're the only person here who can be of any help, and you're shaking your duty as a private citizen. And you're showing that you have no character, no civic pride. Mother is right, Joey. I'm ashamed of you. Me too. Me too. <laughs> well, I'm ashamed of me too. But I got good reasons for not wanting to get involved. We're listening, aren't we, family? This is a country of freedom and equal opportunity for all. And if a man wants to steal, he should have that freedom. <laughs> freedom. Freedom. Freedom to steal $30,000 from widows and orphans? Come on, I'll cut you, double or nothing. <laughs> okay, but with my car. Or something? Something. What's something? I'm engaged to a guy who's afraid to identify a crook for the cop. Well, Mabel, if you're trying to say I'm a coward, I am. <laughs> In a case like this. Well, Joey, every girl has to realize that the man she loves is never quite the man she thinks he is. <laughs> I guess, I guess I don't even come close, huh? Close enough. I could do a lot better, maybe. I could also do a lot worse. You mean, you love this coward? <laughs> Can I help it if I'm a little mixed up? <laughs> and, and you're not going to say another word about my going to the cops? Not another word. Why aren't you? Because when you're through work tonight, I'm going to meet you at the garage and drag you down to the police station. <laughs> I won't go. I won't go. Joey. I won't go. Joey. I won't go. I'll go. Oh! 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 I just stopped that silly packet. You don't have to leave town. No, you don't know Mabel. She's trying to track me down right this minute, probably. That's why I got the phone off the hook. <laughs> you know what you could tell Mabel? You tell her you're on your way down to the station on your own to identify the crook. Yeah, then what happened? You know what happened? Then the gang found out about it, and they jumped you, and they hit you over the head with a blackjack, and they gave you a fractured skull. <laughs> he was not going to believe I got a fractured skull. 
You will if I hit you over the head with a milk bottle. You must be crazy if you think I'm gonna let you hit me in the head with a milk bottle. Joey, I can't do this all myself. You gotta make some sacrifices, too. All right, that laundry. Look at that. There are no holes. These aren't my socks. <laughs> I got it. I got it. This one will absolutely work. It's absolutely foolproof. Yeah? You drive along the Hudson River, see? Yeah. Up as far as the George Washington Bridge. Yeah. You get halfway across the bridge, and you throw one leg over the rail, see? Yeah. Can you swim? Sure. It's no good. <laughs> what about your uh, polo mallet? That's not a polo mallet, that's a croquette stick. <laughs> you want to know the difference? The horses. <laughs> they can always tell the difference. <laughs> what I really need is some honest lie that Mabel will swallow. That's very clever. <laughs> but what'll you tell Mabel? Well, I'll tell her that I got a wire from my Uncle Harry. And he said he... <laughs> oh, hi, honey. I've been trying to call you for an hour. Ah, your phone is off the hook. I wish I was off the hook. <laughs> Why are you packing a suitcase? Um, I was... You tell him, Mike. Yeah, go ahead. You tell me, Mike. You see, Mabel, Joe kind of figured that, uh... Well, you... well see, what Joe had in mind was... Uh, you tell it, Joe. Go ahead, Joey. It's your turn again. I was practicing fast packing in case we ever decided to elope. That's it. That's it. That's really it. Ain't that it? Hey, boy, that's the truth. I couldn't have thought of a better truth myself. <laughs> ah, buddy. Well, I knew you were man enough to do the right thing. It's more than I knew. It's more than we both knew. Come on, it isn't polite to keep the police waiting. Bad manners. They're busy. I don't think I really saw this guy well enough to identify him. Never mind. We've been all through that. <clears throat> yes? He's got a confession to make. <laughs> what? It's about the robbery this afternoon. You know, the charity fund? Oh, what about it? Well, the bandit was in my boyfriend's cab. This is my boyfriend here, Joey. <laughs> I never saw her before in my life. <laughs> Tell the nice man you got a good look at the bandit. I got a good look at the bandit. Oh, great. Hey, now, can you give us an accurate description of him? Well, uh, he was kind of, uh, medium height. Medium built. Medium weight. <laughs> he had kind of, a medium complexion. <laughs> he was dressed medium. <laughs> I'd say he was medium. <laughs> that description would fit anybody passing the police station. Well, then that ought to make it easy to arrest the guy. He forgot to tell you he got a good look at his face, and he'll remember it to his dying day, won't you, honey? And you're trying to rush the day. <laughs> no, neither one of those two guys. With you. What kind of a way is that to look at pictures? Listen, baby, I saw him over my shoulder, and that's the way I remember him. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, hold it. Now, nah, that ain't the guy. Hey, Mabel. Is that him? Is that him? No, but don't that guy look just like your Uncle George? <laughs> yeah. She does, doesn't she? Around the years. Look, we picked up a few suspects this afternoon. Why don't we put them in a lineup and let Joe Citizen here look at them? It's a good idea. Do you think you'd recognize him if you saw him face to face? Listen, Sergeant. All I can tell you is 
If I ever set my glims on this G and give him the double O, you can make book. You'll wind up in a pokey sweating out of one of ten wraps. <laughs> what? If I see him, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh. Come on. Oh, Bill, we're short of guys to stand in for the lineup. Would you mind stepping in and fill out? Not at all. Thanks. How about you, Lieutenant? I don't know what you guys would do around here without my kisser. Well, you certainly dress up the joint. You know, I'm eternally grateful to that left tackle for putting his cleats in my face. Gave me a brand new personality. <laughs> all right. Right then. Oh. <laughs> All right, move along. Bring him in. by that frightened look in your brave little eyes. Yeah. He's there, he's there. The guy that stuck up the charity thing. Which one is he? He's the guy right there. He's the one between the tall crook and the one that looks honest. He's lying. He's lying. Don't you get your feet? He's lying. Let me out of here. Okay, he's got me covered. I pulled the stick up. You never would have had me if it hadn't been for that lobby. You stole me. Lieutenant Thompson. Detective? He looks like a murderer. Thanks, lady. <laughs> okay, Lou. Take him away. But you, Mabel is right. This is the man. This is the one. I'm sure this is the one. <laughs> Listen, weren't you in my cab today? Weren't you in my cab? What are you talking about? Don't you remember me? Windows up, windows down, Fifth Avenue, the, through the park. Oh, the park yeah, yeah. The pest. Cut. That's right, the pest. <laughs> Maybe you can explain to me what you were doing in the neighborhood in a robbery with a little black valise. Oh, I was taking the police over to the bus station to my wife. She was going out of town for a couple of days. Yeah, and what were you doing with a handkerchief over your face? I just came from the dentist. <laughs> oh, Mabel. You still look like a murderer. That's part of my fatal charm, lady. <laughs> well, I guess it wasn't too hard. But his dentist sure made a sucker out of me. Oh, what difference does it make? You got a confession out of the right guy, didn't you? Yeah, that's a fact. And you wouldn't have gotten it if a certain party didn't want to prove that the guy she loved wasn't a coward. Yeah, that's another fact. Lady, you ought to be proud of your boyfriend. I am, Sergeant. <laughs> He's one of the most responsible people I know. <laughs> he sure is. And we're deeply grateful. Thank you, Sergeant. Well, come on, baby. I'll take you home. We'll go through the park. Wait a minute. I'll talk, I'll talk. I'm guilty, I'm guilty. Guilty of what? Of loving you. <laughs> Like I said, it don't take much to make yourself a hero to your girl nowadays. See, the days of the muscle man are past. Nowadays, you can even be flabby. But you gotta have it here. See, right there. That's what done it for me. A flabby brain. <laughs> like, 
Take a time, for example, that Mabel and me were having this big argument about me going bowling with the boys. See, she wanted me to go. She was trying to get a night off from me. Well, this brain me right away to begin with, see. In addition to that, I ain't so easy to talk to anything anyway.